Well, come on, let's give the Lord the highest praise in the house. Come on, do you really want to worship the Lord this morning? Let's worship Him for one more moment. Lord, we love you, we magnify you, we bless your name. We say you're great, you're greatly to be praised. Lord, we lift up hands now without wrath, without doubting. We declare that you are the God, that we are the man. We declare you are the potter, we are the clay. We declare you are the creator, we are the creature. Father, I pray you'd have your will, have your way in all of our lives. Right now, I ask that your spirit will begin to speak to the people under the sound of my voice. Father, we tune our ear to your command. We want to hear that still, small voice. Many people are needing answers. I pray, Father, you come and answer them now. Speak to them, lift them, help them. I thank you for those that are depressed. They find joy right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the sick find healing in you. Lord, I thank you that those that have great need, they find that you are their prosperity. Lord, I bless these people under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, lead, glide, guide, and help us in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, tell them this, say you look like you've lost 25 pounds. Let's up the ante today. Tell them they, tell them they look good in the house of God. They'll come back next week. Amen. Well, it's, uh, it's good to see you in the house. I, I believe something good's going to happen for us today. Amen. Does anybody believe something good could happen in here today? I believe something good's going to happen in here today. I, uh, something good happened for one of my friends this week. I, I ministered in the middle of the week out in a small town in Tennessee. Uh, one of my buddies was there with me, Pastor Greg Locke. And uh, we were there on Wednesday night. On Tuesday night, some madman pulled up in front of his house and had a um, had an automatic trigger, uh, you know, put on a, a nine and a barrel clip in the thing and unloaded 60 rounds into my friend's house. And uh, but here's what happened: is they were driving home. They were uh, out out in another part of Tennessee with their family, driving home, and God spoke to his wife, told her, "You need to slow down and drive at this speed limit." For, till you get home and after that guy shot up their house the locks pulled in one minute after he pulled out come on God protected and spared their lives we ought to give God the highest praise how many know Psalm 91 it works can I get an amen out there how many will pray for that family this week God's going to help the locks we declare it he's preached here many times I've preached at his place many times and uh, I'll have him back here soon uh, whenever the devil's coming after guys like that, you ought to know God's using them. I said God's using them. Huh? God will supernaturally protect us. And uh, I believe the help of heaven's going to flow into this house today. Come on. Um, I just want to, I really feel led to pray for protection for some people under the sound of my voice right now. Would you close your eyes one more second? I know I'm supposed to be preaching now, but I feel like I'm to pray. Father, I thank you for what you did for the locks. You protected them. You protected them. Lord, right now, I think that the shield of faith quenches every fiery dart of the wicked one, according to the book of Ephesians. I think that the favor of the Lord, Psalms 5, 12, surrounds us as a shield. I think that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I thank you, Father, there's a hedge of protection on our life. I declare every person attached to his church, you are protected. The angel of the Lord holds you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. I, I speak blessing and prosperity and protection over your life. Lord, I thank you that we're faithful gospel people. And as we preach, signs and wonders follow. Right now, I lose signs, I lose wonders, I lose miracles into this house. I thank you that today is a house of supernatural healing. We're in it, and so we receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Well, I, I started preaching, I think it was last week, I preached a message on the broken pulpit. I was talking about the broken pulpit and that kind of came out of the fact that I smashed a pulpit in her in church I didn't like and uh, I prophesied after I smashed it. I just smashed it because I didn't like the pulpit. Felt the power of God come on me and God gave me a word that God's going to restore broken pulpits around America. That clip went viral and millions and millions of people have seen it now. Uh, a lot of them had some nasty things to say about me, but that's the fun of social media. It makes me feel alive when they write nasty things about me online. I'm like, thank you. I feel, I feel so alive when you do that for me. Um, how many of y'all think we need some stronger churches again in America? How many of y'all think we need some stronger preaching again in America? 
How many of y'all think we need the word of, of the Lord again strong in America? How many of you think we need some preachers that they say enough the devil wants to shoot up their houses because they hate the prophets of God? How many of y'all think we need some guys like that in America? God's going to raise up a stronger pulpit. Can I get an amen? God's done it many, many times before. If you look in the book of Revelation, even before there was a pulpit, pulpit came around about 250 A.D. But before that, there was a man by the name of John. God gave John a message about how you're supposed to speak to seven churches and tell them to clean up their act. God came to them and told them what they did right. How I many know Jesus will encourage us? But then he told them what they did wrong. So the problem with the church today is we only tell people what they're doing right. I don't just need to hear what I'm doing right. I also need to hear what I'm doing wrong so I can correct my behavior. Amen? So Jesus shows up and he'll say whatever he wants to say because he's Jesus. And he shows up and he tells John some things. Uh, I I want you to open up your Bible if you have it on you. I'm going to read out of a different translation than I typically do today. I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation because I think it makes some of the language easier in Revelation chapter 1. And I want you to start in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. All right, Revelation 1 verse 8. Also I'm going to prophesy to a few people here while I'm preaching as well. See where the Lord's starting to rise up in this house. Revelation 1 verse 8. Here's what, here's what it says. It says, I'm the Alif and the Tav. That's the Hebrew alphabet, the Alif, the beginning, and the Tav. Some translations say I'm the Alpha and the Omega. That's the Greek. If we were talking in English, you'd say I'm the A and I'm the Z. All right, he says I'm the Alif and the Tav. The beginning and the end, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, am your brother, and companion in tribulation, the king and the patience that are found in Jesus. I was exiled on the Isle of Patmos because of the ministry of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit realm on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice sounding like a trumpet saying to me, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. When I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands. Walking among the lampstands, I saw someone like a son of man, wearing a full-length robe with a golden sash over his chest. Here's the first thing that you need to know about this text, is John was a faithful companion of Jesus. This is John the Beloved, or John the one that Jesus loved. You know who wrote that about John? John wrote that about about himself in the Gospel of John. Tells you John had a great self-esteem, right? It's like writing about yourself. I'm like, I'm the guy that Jesus really liked. It's like my kids do this. Briley is went away to college right now, but she always calls me and she says, Dad, do you miss your favorite child? That's the first thing she always says. And I'm like, I don't have a favorite child, but I do miss you. And uh, John thought he was the favorite. And so John was very faithful to Jesus. If you look at the numbers in, in, in the New Testament, Uh, You can see after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, 500 people see him after his resurrection. 500 people, pretty big crowd, sees Jesus after he's resurrected from the dead. Uh, Out of those 500, there's 120 people that show up to Pentecost. Jesus tells them to tarry in Jerusalem till you're endued with power from on high. 120 of them do it. Can you imagine 380 people seeing Jesus, Jesus telling them to do something after his resurrection, and them not doing it? Those are the stats. 120 did out of 500. So you got 500 see them, 120 show up. I think about other numbers. There's 70 people that are sent out two by two. There are, um, there are 12 disciples that are closest to Jesus through thick and thin. Out of those 12, there are three that are closer than anybody else, Peter, James, and John. And out of those three, whenever Jesus is crucified, there's only one of all these people left standing whenever Jesus is being slaughtered at the cross. And the man that's left standing is John the Beloved or John the Apostle. I think maybe he was the one that Jesus loved, if he's the one that would endure to the end. Come on, how many of y'all think we ought to be a church that doesn't just start? We're not just in a leaf kind of church? How many of y'all think we ought to be a Tav kind of church? Not just an Alpha kind of church? How many of y'all think we ought to be an Omega kind of church? Come on. Not just a Genesis kind of church? We ought to be a Revelation kind of church. Can I get an amen? You ought to be an A all the way to a C because that's what our God is. John's there. He's there at the crucifixion. John's there and some of the Marys are there. That's the only people that make it. 
And listen, John's faithful not just in that day. He lives a life faithful to Jesus. How many of y'all want to make it to the end faithful to Jesus? Amen. I was eating with a prophet in Columbia the other day. We're talking about all these great men of God. And he was mentored by a Puerto Rican prophet, this guy I know. And he said this prophet did the craziest miracles I'd ever see. He would, uh, this guy had a crazy word of knowledge that I'm with. But he said the guy that mentored him, he'd start sweating in services. And he would be uh, wiping his head with his handkerchief. And he'd call people out that had a lot of tats on them. And he would say, come here. And if you're tatted, I'm not against you, right? You, you ink all you want. I don't have any tats because you don't put a bumper sticker on a Bentley. That's all I got to say, right? Because I'm, come on, I, I don't need them because I'm beautiful, right? But those of you that want them, go for it, right? Smoke them if you got them. I don't care. But, but he said that guy would get under the anointing, and he would wipe his forehead. He'd call guys up with, pat, uh, with tats all over his arms. He would grab his uh, handkerchief and wipe their tattoos off at times as a sign and a wonder. He also said, they, you know, I could have saved so much money with dental work if I'd have been around this guy. They said that, that he would call people out and their teeth would be like real wide in the middle. He'd say, close your mouth, and he'd smack them in the face in the name of Jesus. Their teeth would straighten up. How many of our God's a God that still does miracles? I said our God's a God that still does miracles. Does anybody believe in Amarillo, Texas, and our God's a God? Does anybody believe our God still does miracles? How many of y'all expect a miracle? It's one thing to believe it. It's another thing to expect it. Very different. Now you're in the face zone when you start expecting one. And uh, we're talking about the guys that, that we're talking about all these great prophets and men of God and revival guys, especially over the last, like, hundred years because we, we know their history intimately. And um, the ones that really impressed us, we were talking, they're the ones that made it to the end. Even, even through some messes, they didn't quit, you know? A lot of people talk bad about, some of you older people have heard this name. Y'all know Jimmy Swagger? You know what I'm talking about? Some of you guys are like 107 in here. Y'all know who I'm talking about right now? He had some very public messes, and that was unfortunate. But you know what he did? He kept going. Something about keeping going, isn't it? How many of y'all want to keep going? I don't want to get to heaven and have Jesus look me in the eye and like, you tapped out, son. How many of are going to, come on, we're going to make it to the end. We're going to be a Tav kind of church. I said you're going to be a Tav kind of people. You're not, you're not just an elite. You're a Tav. I prophesy you're a Tav kind of people in the name of Jesus. John's a Tav kind of man. And he's there. He, he makes it all the way to the end. And uh, there, was a, there was an evil government most of the time you look at the government in the Bible, it is evil. A couple of things you'll see that are always evil. Uh, you look in the government, if it talks about a massive city, it's typically associated with evil and wickedness. And if you look at government, it's typically associated with evil and wickedness. All right? The government is not our answer. The government cannot fix this nation. No presidential candidate can fix this nation. Now, I've got a clear guy I'm, I'm voting for. Right? I'm getting my spray tan orange on and I'm voting Trump. Just telling you, I am. I look good in a spray tan, but uh, Trump can't fix this nation. You all understand that, right? Well, I know Harris is demon possessed. Trump needs to be born again. This nation's going to be fixed, God's going to fix it, and the church is going to rise up. Come on, and we're going to have an awakening and a revival. Now, I'm a political guy, but my hopes aren't in politics. Can I get an amen? My hopes aren't in the ways of this world. My hopes are in the kingdom of God. How many of y'all hope in the kingdom? Amen. So the, the Roman emperor, they hated John and the apostles because of their message. They didn't hate them because they prayed for the sick. They didn't hate them because they fed the poor. They didn't hate them for, for those things. They hated them because they said a king was coming. Because our message is prophetic. It's also political. We serve a king. And it's not Caesar. Our king is Jesus. Because of that, they persecuted John. They persecuted Peter, crucified upside down. They killed um, Thomas in India. You look at the list, almost everybody dies. Everybody gets martyred. All of those close to Jesus. 
They, they all died for the preaching of the cross is why, why they died. But, but ultimately they died because they preach a king is coming. They have a political message or that's the way the world viewed it. And so they're coming after John and there's an uh, evil emperor by the name of the, t- of the time of D- Domitian was his name. And Domitian's followers, they get John, the apostle John, and they put him in oil to boil him in oil. And so they light up the pots, they get John in the oil, they're all in a frenzy, they're going to cook a Christian, it's another day at the torch where there's persecution for the people of God. They put John in the oil, and whenever they light up the oil, there's something that happens with John. They can't burn John's flesh because God comes down, church history tells me, and supernaturally protects John's flesh in the oil. He would not burn because he would not bow. Come on, somebody. If we won't bow, I believe we won't burn till our assignment is done and God takes us up into heaven. Come on, we're not going to bow in 2024. We're not going to bow in 2025. We didn't bow in 2020. There are tough times coming. There'll be hell in the streets. We're going to have heaven in the church. Somebody give God the highest praise. We're not going to bow. Hey, I said we're not going to bow. We're not going to burn. Turn to your neighbor, tell them we won't bow and we won't burn. Just tell them that today. We're not going to do it. And listen, when he doesn't bow, he doesn't burn. He gets exiled to the Isle of Patmos. I'd like to be exiled to the Isle of Maui. That's where I, I wore my shirt for it today. Maybe Kauai. I like Jamaica. I like the Bahamas. How many of y'all want to be exiled with me somewhere to Blue Waters? Amen. I want to go somewhere. I don't want to be exiled by myself. I want to be exiled to like a five-star resort. It's where I want to be exiled to. Suffering. I'm ministering to the people by the pool for Jesus right now. Amen. Um, he gets exiled. And he's out on the Isle of Patmos. Wonders are starting to break out in here. I said wonders are starting to break out in here. I said wonders are starting to break out. I prophesy wonders in here. Come on, lift your hand to heaven, right? Lift your hand down. I prophesy wonders in here. I declare the wonders of God are coming upon you. I prophesy gold. I prophesy oil. I prophesy gold. I prophesy oil. I prophesy gold. I prophesy oil. Wonders of heaven are coming into this room. The name of Jesus. Wonders, wonders, wonders. Some of y'all have never done this before. You ought to look at your hands. Pick out your cell phone. Turn the light onto your cell phone and shine it on your hands. Some of you have seen this a lot. So this is an old trick for those of you that have been around a while. Y'all start to see gold. Hold on, here it comes. Flashes of small light on your hands all over this place. Now, there it is. How many of y'all got that on your hands right now? Let me see you. Right there, right there, right there. Some of you that don't have it on you, show it to somebody around you that hadn't seen it before. I want y'all to see this. Wonders of God starts happening. Those are wonders. What is that? I don't know. It's a wonder. If I could explain it, it wouldn't be a wonder, would it? Amen? That happened where I was preaching on Wednesday night, covered a crowd outside in Etheridge, Tennessee. And uh, if you look around on the floor when you walk out of here, you'll see stuff that flashes on the floor, like little things that catch the light. We pray in there four days a week. We'll vacuum it up. It's gone. By the time we're done praying, it'll be back on the floor. What is it? I don't know what it is. It's a wonder. But I know this. In times where the government's rising up and there's persecution and there's an antichrist spirit loosed on the earth, how many of y'all think there ought to be other signs and wonders anointings coming to the church right now? We're in an hour where the the word of the Lord's going to manifest in supernatural ways. Blind eyes are going to see. Deaf ears are going to hear. I hear bones popping back into place right now. I hear bones popping back into place. I prophesy bones are coming back into place. In the name of Jesus. I preached in Tennessee this week on Wednesday night. Uh, Pastor Greg was with me. We we were already scheduled to be together. It was the night after his house got shot up. And um, it hadn't rained where I was in like eight weeks or something. God told me to go there and to prophesy rain. And I'll tell you what, within 48 hours, the rains fell, just like like the word of the Lord came to the tent. Come on, our God's a God that's going to cause wonders in the heavens above and the earth beneath. Come on. Like it says in the book of Acts, isn't it a great hour to be alive? John's out on the Isle of Patmos, and he's suffering because he's faithful for Jesus. Here's what happens. Jesus shows up. 
and uh, speaks to John. John tells the story. John, John's exiled because of, because of Jesus. And he's there because of the ministry of the word of God, the testimony of Jesus. John says something interesting in verse uh, 9 or 10. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. In this version, he says he was in the spirit realm on the Lord's day. You know, we live in a natural realm, don't we? You look around, you see the temporal. You're walking in the temporal, living in the temporal. If we're not careful, this temporal world gets all of our attention, right? There's things to, to be concerned about. There's bills to take care of. There's dirty diapers to change. Not for me anymore, thank God, but for some of you. There's, uh, there's like lawns that need to be mowed, right? Some of you got neighbors you don't like. You've got to avoid when you go home at night. There's all this natural stuff. There's this eternal realm. Uh, excuse me, natural realm, but on the other side of the natural realm, how many of y'all believe there's an eternal realm? Right here, there's an eternal realm, and it's right here with us. Don't think that it's far away. It's not far away. The, na- the, the, the natural realm's here, but the eternal realm's here as well. Some of the early church fathers taught this heavily. Like, I think about St. Patrick of Ireland, all right? He believed that there were ley lines, is what they called them. There was like almost a spiritual highway that was laid all over the earth where spiritual entities could move. The angelic would move on almost this invisible highway right on the other side. He also believed the demonic through illegal access could move through the same ley lines. And so what the Celtic Christians did is they built churches and houses of prayer right where they believed the ley lines were to stop the demonic and to assist the angelic with their prayers. How many of y'all see that's believing in the spiritual realm, isn't it? They almost believe like their churches were like portals or gates to heaven where the angelic and the word of the Lord and, and mysterious things could happen. How many know there's some mysteries in the, in the things of God? Paul talked about the mystery of Christ. In the West, we think we have it all figured out. I watch these guys online. They're from the heady branch of Christianity. And they think they're the first guy that ever read a theological book. And they're always talking how they got everything figured out. And if you have anything spiritual, otherworldly, or any kind of sign and wonder, they come after you, try to label you a heretic, but they just have never seen past this realm into the other realm. How many want our eyes opened? Come on, we don't worship a book. We worship the God of the book. We don't just worship something on paper. We worship the God that penned the thing that we read on paper. The Bible is spirit and it is life. There's a spirit realm right here. Paul, or excuse me, John, he's caught up in the spirit. And I've been, I don't know, I've probably never been where John's been, but I've been in the the spirit before. And uh, almost where you leave where you are. And inside some other kind of system in prayer. If you'll pray enough and give enough to the things of God, God will open your eyes and show you things beyond this realm. You want to see when the demonic's targeting you? Start to pray. God will show you demonic strategy. How many of y'all think we ought to get a step ahead of the devil through, through seeing? Can I get an amen? Sensing and knowing. You can start to sense and know whenever the angelic's assisting you. Right? God helped my buddy the other night, protected his family. I believe the angelic was involved. His wife, and listen, I know his wife. His wife prays almost all day. And the pastor's read the Bible already this year like, how many times, Jesse? He's like in, in 20 or 30 times already this year. That's a lot of Bible reading. Reads the Bible like 10 hours a day when he's not preaching. So God stepped in and stopped. All right, John, John's in the, in the spirit realm. And all of a sudden, the Bible says that he hears a voice like a trumpet. Come on, whenever God speaks, it's like something new is starting in your life. How many know a trumpet signifying something's coming, or there's a war, or or there's a holiday or festival? Come on, this trumpet starts to blow. I declare that the trump of God is blowing in our life, and something new is happening. Come on, I declare our enemies are being turned around because the God of the trumpet is trumpeting. The Bible says that there's a trumpet And he hears it in his spirit. And it says to him, it tells him what to do. John has an assignment now. Right? John's on the the island. God gives him that trumpet, gives him this assignment. He says, write a book, what you see, and send it to the seven churches. He says, I have an assignment for you, John. You have a message. 
because the pulpits are broken and messed up in my churches, and I want you to go fix it, and I'm going to trumpet something into your spirit. Now you're to go to seven different churches in Asia Minor, and you're going to tell them what I said. The trump of God, the voice of God often comes to further your assignment for the kingdom. A lot of people want to hear from God, but they've never started on any of their assignment from God. Right? So why would God give you further instruction if you hadn't moved on the last instruction? Amen? How many believe the word of the Lord stays the same? If he gives us an assignment, we're to keep doing it. You know what God spoke to me years ago? I was a kid. Me and Jesse were at Oral Roberts University, and I was down in the, in the altar, and there was a man of God from Africa that had built hospitals and churches, and I'm talking just a walking, living, breathing epistle and apostle. And he calls us down to the altar, kids, y'all want to figure out what you want to do for God? And I already knew I wanted to be a preacher. I wanted to be an evangelist because I wanted to blow in and blow out of churches. And I didn't want to put up with all of you because you're crazy. You know, a lot of you people are crazy. And uh, the evangelist doesn't have to deal with you Monday through Friday. He's like on the golf course or taking videos of himself or something like that. And I'm like, what a deal. You go preach, you know, you heal the sick, you, 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 you get people saved. Then you get to leave and you don't have to deal with everybody. And... Uh, most of the time, the, the devil doesn't know the evangelist's uh, address. He's already out and gone somewhere. I'm not, uh, we like to make fun of guys like that because we're pastors and we feel like we're the toughest guys on earth. They say the same stuff about us. But uh, I'm in the altar. I went down there because I want to know what God has for my life. And I was standing in that altar and God spoke to me. That man of God from Africa started praying. Power of God came on the crowd. Tell you what, like a um, wind came in there. God spoke to me in my spirit, and he said this. He said, build me a church. Build me a church. Build me a church. Three times just like that, resounding in my spirit. And uh, if you know anything about biblical literature, when God says things multiple times, especially in Jewish culture, it's not about him repeating himself. It's about volume. If he says it once, Jesus said, you know, you read the Gospels, he'll say, verily. Right, he says it once in conversational tone. But if it says verily, verily, it's like verily, he's getting your attention. And then if something's written three times in biblical literature, it's like an earth-shaking earthquake of a cry. Like in the temple where they say holy, holy, holy. There, it's, it's just a cry that's almost deafening. God spoke to me and said, build me a church, build me a church, build me a church. So I've given the last 20-something years of my life to building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because the churches of Asia Minor and the churches of Amarillo and the churches of Western Kentucky and the churches of Thailand and the churches of Latin America. Come on, somebody, the church matters to Jesus and God wants to touch and bless and lift his church. Can I get an amen out there? John gets a message from God not just for himself Christianity is not an isolation faith it's not an individualistic faith we've messed some people up I know what we try to communicate when we tell them we, we tell them you, you don't need a religion you need a relationship you don't need a you need a, a personal relationship with Jesus and it's true come on we need a personal relationship of Jesus amen but a personal relationship with Jesus will take you to a community work, uh, relationship with Jesus. I said a personal relationship with Jesus will take you to a community-wide relationship with Jesus. And if you got a relationship with Jesus, it doesn't connect you to the church. You have a broken relationship with Jesus. That's good preaching, Pastor. You can't do faith with Jesus by yourself. You can't do it on your couch online. You can't do it watching your favorite celebrity preacher. There's a local church that needs you. You're assigned to a local church, and a local church is assigned to you. Come on, church, we need each other. Jesus starts speaking. He starts speaking to the churches of Asia Minor. I have a message for you individually. And every one of those churches has a different message. Pretty interesting. Jesus shows up, turns to John, says, you got to write these things. So John hears it, and then he turns around, and John, the, the revelator, gets to see Jesus face to face. And not, not just the Jesus that he walked with um, in, in, in the flesh. He gets to see the resurrected Jesus face to face. I mean, on the earth, he came as a lamb to be sacrificed, but he's not a lamb anymore. He's an eternal lamb, but he's also a lion. 
turns around and he beholds the line of the tribe of Judah. This is already the resurrected, conquered death, hell in the grave, conquered sickness Jesus. You know the Jesus we serve right now? He's the resurrected line of the tribe of Judah, conquered sickness, conquered hell, conquered the grave, conquered poverty, conquered depression. Come on, your Jesus is not weak on a cross, uh, hanging up in a church. Your Jesus is resurrected in power. Come on, give God a hand clap if you believe your Jesus is resurrected. I said he's resurrected in power. The power of God is here. If Jesus is here, the power of God's here. And he turns around and he sees him, and Jesus is wearing some stuff. It says this, I don't think I read it to you yet, but let, let's look down. Verse uh, 13. Well, let's go to 12. When I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands. All right, everybody say seven. There's seven churches. He turns around, he sees Jesus. There's seven golden lampstands. He said, I saw someone like a son of man wearing a full-length robe with a golden sash over his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, white as glistening snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were gleaming like bright metal as though they were glowing in a fire. His voice was like the roar of many rushing water, waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was shining like the brightness of the blinding sun. When I saw him, I fell down at his feet as good as dead, but he laid his right hand on me and I heard his reassuring voice saying, don't yield to fear. I'm the beginning and I'm the end, the living one. I was dead, but now look, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys that unlock death and the unseen world. Now I want you to write what you have seen, what is, and what will be after the things that I reveal to you. He turns around and John sees Jesus face to face. How many of y'all want to see Jesus, man? I want to see Jesus. Um, I used to pray. There's a, there's a scripture, I think it's in John. I'm trying to remember right now. But it says that those who pretty much love him and follow him, that Jesus will come and manifest himself to him. All right, y'all can look it up later. Some of you Bible scholars, I'm shooting from the hip here, just came to me. But it says this. That Jesus will come, and if you look up that word manifest, I looked this up like in my 20s, because I'd hear these stories about people seeing Jesus. And I started praying. I said, God, I want, I want to I hear these guys that have seen you, seen you. I want to see you. And I started praying that scripture. I pray you'll come and visibly manifest yourself to me, like you did John. And one night, I was living in Owensboro, Kentucky. Jesse and I, we've probably been pastors about five or six years. And I was there in my bed. And the power of God came into my bedroom so strong it woke me up. Straight out, straight out of the bed like the glory of God's in the room. And it wasn't just like, sometimes God manifests himself and it'll be like joy and peace and love. Sometimes he'll manifest himself and it'll be like power and authority and honor and respect comes into the room. And you instantly know that he's God and you're not. How many of you have ever experienced something like that when God shows up? Man, the power of God came into my room, and it was like the weight of God came in. God spoke to me and said, come out, come out into the hallway, and I'll, I'll manifest myself to you. And I said, I'm not ready for that, Lord. Leave me alone. I don't want that yet. Now, I always kind of resented that I prayed that. Um, you know, I'm like, I, I don't know, just the fear of the Lord was so strong, I didn't think I could handle it. Does that make sense to some of you at the time? Does that make sense? I'm like, I don't, I don't think I can, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I can handle that. Well, John turns around and he sees it face to face. And he, he, he gets a full dose of, of seeing Jesus. Man, what would it do for our lives if we got a full dose of seeing Jesus face to face in his resurrected power and his glory? What would it do with our witness and our testimony and our endurance? I think it would change everything. So John turns around and looks at Jesus. First thing the Bible says is Jesus is wearing a white robe with a sash. It's, it's like a symbol of the priestly garment from the Old Testament. How many know our Jesus is our high priest? We got a high priest that understands us, the Bible says. Jesus has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He's been tempted just like we have, but he never sinned. Is anybody thankful that our Jesus didn't drop the ball, he didn't fumble, but he was faithful all the way to the cross? He took our sin upon himself. The Bible says in every point, just like we're tempted where we missed it and we failed, 
He made it. So Jesus is there. He's got this sash. Second thing John says about Jesus is his beard and his hair were white. Come on. I'm being conformed to the image of Jesus. I have other friends here that are too. Some of you white hairs ought to give the Lord a hand clap right now. Amen? Some of you that have been dyeing your hair, you're resisting the will of God right now. His hair is white. It's a symbol. It says it's like wool. Right? There's a purity about whiteness. There's there's a purity about wool. Though you were scarlet, the scripture says you've been washed white as snow. Right? It's a biblical purity thing. How many know our God, whenever you see Jesus face to face, there's a washing and a cleansing in the gospel that comes to our life. We are no longer a scarlet. When we behold him, we're made white as snow. Come on, our sins are forgiven. Our name's written in the Lamb's book of life. We're translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Is anybody thankful to be a new creation? Is anybody thankful to be a new creation? Come on in the balcony, up in the cheap seats. Are y'all thankful to be a new creation? He sees him white. That, some of that, I think, comes to John's life. Next thing John says is his eyes. He notices his eyes. His eyes look at him, and his eyes are like fire. The eye of the Lord goes to and fro throughout the earth looking for people that are completely his. And you can lie to your mama. You can lie to your pastor. You can lie to a prophet and get away from it sometimes. Right? Get away with it. But you can't lie to the eye of Jesus. Because he sees right through us, doesn't he? I feel the power of God when I say that. He sees right through me. Right? He sees my fears, my failures, my sins. All of that. And he still loves me. Yeah, I... I uh, I did have an encounter like this with Christ last year. And uh, we had a revival that broke out here. How many of y'all have enjoyed what God has done in our midst over the last year? I mean, it's been crazy. Last year, crazy things have happened here. Crazy things. And I was worn out. We've been preaching for, I don't know how long it was. It felt like forever. But uh, I was talking to God, and I said, Lord, I need some help. I didn't have a guest speaker. We had a meeting that night, and everybody went home. I said, I need some help. I need, a, I need a guest to get in here to take some of this weight off of me where, you know, sometimes you just need to rest. Or when one of them are praying for people, you can look around and hear what the Spirit of God's saying while they're ministering. And um, I need some help. Jesus, who should, I, who should I get to be our guest in here? God spoke to me and he said, Jesus, you know, the, the, the Spirit of God spoke to me. And he said, Brian. I said, yes, Lord. He said, can I be your special guest tonight at the church? Come on, I want Jesus to be our special guest. That's what I want. I want Jesus to be our special guest. I look crazy right now. Look at that. Here you go. Have one of those. All right. Things, uh, it's one of those things manifest on the floor there. Um. Looks like a, I don't know what it is. Looks like a stone of some kind. Bill, anybody else seen those in here? Is there one right there? Yeah? Go get it. I don't know what it is. It's a wonder. But uh, Jesus, that night, that thing's starting to, somebody lift your hand. The power of God's coming in here right now. Lift your hands. Just receive it into your spirit right now. I loose power into you. I loose the revelation of Christ into you. I loose the divine understanding into you. I declare many of you from this day forward you'll not just see the temporal world. God will begin to open your eyes to see the things of the Spirit. You'll not just hear natural words. You'll start to hear by the voice of the Spirit of God. I declare it's a new day of glory and a new day of an anointing coming into your life and into your house. You'll begin to transition from natural to spiritual. You'll hear my voice and you'll follow me into things that that are to come. 
I'm opening your eyes, I'm quickening your ears, and I'm anointing your tongue to change a broken world. You're a lampstand, and I'm coming and I'm lighting your lamp this day, says God. And your lampstand will burn in West Texas and all throughout the state of Texas. It'll begin to burn in states around you. And I see it burning as far as the islands in Alaska too. I'm going to use you supernaturally, says God. I'll take many of your sons and daughters and I'll throw them to the nations of the earth. Their feet will be quick. Their mouth will be wise. Their eyes will see with the glimpse of the Spirit. They'll plant churches. They'll build works for me. I'll use them as kings and priests in a dark and broken world. And they'll love their lives even, not love their lives even unto death, says God. I'm using you in this congregation. Now I'm about to do something in you. I'm about to take a match of my spirit and to light this thing higher. And coming through the fall and into the first of the year, you'll see my spirit and you'll hear my voice clear, says God. Father, we receive it. Come on, somebody lift your hands a little higher. I'll loose the anointing of God. Oil and gold and help from heaven. I bind demon power too. I bind demon power. I say the captive's free. In Jesus' name. The church said, amen. Do you receive it? Come on, do you receive it? I said, do you receive it? Do you receive it? I was praying that night. I said, God, I want you to be our special guest that day. I said, yes. And I got in there and I preached the message called Behold the Lamb. And at the end of the message, I was down there praying for people in the altar. And I was walking through the altar and uh, I was walking like this. It's on film. We got it somewhere here. I'm walking. I'm praying for people. and We're praying that God will restore us to our first love. Because what happens in life is you fall in love with Jesus. And then life happens and you start to leak. It's a practical application. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? You get filled with the Spirit. You're all full of the Spirit of God, and then stuff happens in life. It's like you get little holes in you, and you start to leak. How many of y'all have ever been there? Before long, you're not in love with Jesus the way you used to be. And God has to come and grab us and return us to our first love. How many of y'all want to be returned to your first love every day? I want a fresh return to my first love every day. And uh, I'm walking through the altar, and I'm praying for people. And all of a sudden, I look to my right, and standing beside me in this altar, I see Jesus. And he's standing there, like, like physically. And uh, I can't see his face clear, but I can see his eyes, and I can see his body. And I see him walk. He's, he's walking by me. And when I, when I see him, it's on, it's on film. I turn around, I see him, and I got a handkerchief in my hand because I sweat like a big boy, and I need a lot of these. And, and so I take my handkerchief whenever I see him, and I cover my face because I'm instantly like undone. His eyes are looking at me and they are like fire. And they saw every bit of me. The good, the bad, the ugly. Right? The loving, the hate-filled parts of me. It's like he could see all of it. And still he loves me despite of who I am. Come on. He loves us. Then he, he stepped over. I'm walking. He steps over and he steps on top of me. And it's like that, that the Bible says that we're in Christ. Come on, it says to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like, how many know we're, we're literally in Jesus right now? It's like, like a revelation of that in my life. Whenever I saw it, I'm just undone. I'm weeping uncontrollably. I'm walking through the altar. And the power of God starts hitting people. I get close to anybody. They're all like falling everywhere. And it was like that for weeks everywhere I went. It's just a revelation of the glory of God. You know, his eyes are like fire, and his eyes are on us. And he is jealous for us, and he wants to do something in us. And he's got a deep love for us. And despise of our idiosyncrasies, despise our sins, our shortcomings, our failure. I'm telling you, the eyes of Jesus are upon you, son and daughter of God most high. And he loves you and he wants to use you and redeem you. And he wants you in Christ so you can bring healing and hope to a hurting, dying world. Come on. The eyes of Jesus are in this place. I said the eyes of Jesus are in this place. His feet are like bronze. 
They're like fire. John goes on to say his voice is like rushing water. Out of his mouth comes a sword, the word of the Lord. Jesus doesn't just see us, he releases his word to us. Sometimes it's got to cut things out of us, doesn't it? Sometimes it have to change perspectives. Sometimes that sword has to sever relationships. The Bible says his face is also shining like a sun. Come on, whenever we behold him, the glory of God comes on us. We start to shine like a sun. Jesus does all this for John. He's preparing his messenger to correct the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of y'all want to see the messenger as he really is? So we can be the church we're called to be. Come on. He's got to see Jesus before he can fix the church. What I'm praying today is that we have a, we have a fresh revelation of who Jesus is. That we could see him supernaturally. Would you stand up on your feet? That's what I'm going to pray for you today. That we could see him supernaturally. Come on, lift up a hand to heaven. Just stand up, lift up a hand to heaven. Father, I pray, I pray, I pray, just like John the Revelator saw Jesus, I pray that we would begin to see him supernaturally, the way we're called to, that we would see him supernaturally, the way we're called to, so we can help the church and take it where it needs to be, supernaturally. I pray for a help now. I pray for a revelation. John got a revelation of Jesus. We desperately want a revelation of Jesus. Father, we cry out for it right now. Come on, if you pray in the Spirit, just start to pray in the Spirit. Lord, give this church a supernatural revelation of Jesus. Only way we're going to have a strong pulpit is if we have a strong understanding of who you are. Father, we want we want you. We, we want to see you. We want to see your eyes like fire, your hair like wool. We want to see the help of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless these your people. I thank you that you quicken their eyes according to your words. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want to give a couple words, all right, a couple prophetic words. You guys, have I prophesied to you all before? No? We all come here, can I pray for you? Come here. Come on, you all stretch your hands towards this couple. I see a real... uh, I see a real hunger welling up in your heart for the things of God. I see a real hunger welling up in your heart for the things of God. God's beginning to help you. God's beginning to touch you and change you. God's beginning to rearrange some things. He's called you to a a type of greatness. He's called you to be a kingly one on the earth. You're called to be someone that's a pillar in the house of God. And I see you in the future and you're strong. God's using you. You're showing people the path of righteousness. You also care deeply about the things of God. And I see you with the care for those that are afflicted and hurt in the future and the broken. God says he's touching you and blessing you so you can touch and bless others. I see you. You'll be used mightily. You'll be an owner. I see you as an owner in the future. You're not just, you're not just, you're not just somebody working. You're, You're somebody that employs and you're an owner. God's got his hands on your life and his help in your life. He's doing things great in your life. I see a multiplication thing about you as well. Uh, God brought you out of, 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 of some stuff, some dumb stuff, and he helped you. And he's going to keep helping you. God's touching you even now. You have a deep desire for, for strong family. Strong family. You want that. It's like down in your DNA. You know what you want to be. You've seen it in other people. And you said, I want us to be strong like they're strong. God's coming to strengthen you even now. The hand of God's being loosed into your life. I see you in the future. I see you supernaturally uh, leading and helping people. I see you like, like uh, almost like a Mary that's birthing some stuff into this earth that really matters. Right? Like that. God's going to use you like that to burst some things into the world that really, really matter. Um, your womb's important. I'll just say that. And the children that come out of you, they're going to be mighty and blessed. They're going to, they're going to be taught of the Lord. God, God's going to take you and make you guys a mighty, 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 mighty um, family. He's going to help you. God's also breaking out in other people in your family right now. Other people in your family, some people that you've been uh, believing for and praying for. I see some real help coming there. I see, I see like, I see like a a younger 
female uh, also being blessed and helped. She's like, I don't know. She looks when I when I she looks like she's in her 20s, right? Early 20s, something like that. She really needs help from heaven. God's coming and helping her as well. I'm telling you, the hand of God's gonna bless you. And uh, you're gonna start to understand the spirit of God unlike you've ever understood it before. So I bless your hands now. See your hands up. I say the fruit of your life is blessed. I declare the fruit of your life is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, church. I'll give God the highest praise. God's going to use us. Bless you guys. Give you all Come on, lift your hands for one worship. second. I'm going to prophesy for like three give minutes and we're out here. Alone now, God. I give you all my worship. I, I see God's eyes on you. God's eyes on you. God loves your worship. He loves your prayer. He loves your heart after him. And he's coming and he's helping. I, 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 see, I see him helping your family. There's desperate need in your family, also some need in your life. God's pouring out his spirit and he's helping you supernaturally. And I see him grabbing and uh, I see I see a young man that's absolutely caught up in, in like mar. Like, like he's hung in his feet and his ankles and he's not going forward where he needs to because the things of this world's got him trapped. God's coming and taking his right hand and uh, pulling that young man up out of the, the miry clay right now. God says, I'll set his feet upon the rock. God says, I'll use him supernaturally. God says, he'll be a testimony of my grace and of my mercy. God says that I'll use him in the earth. So your prayers have been answered. I've seen your cry. I've heard your affliction. And I will come and answer and I will rescue him, says God. Come on, somebody. Give God the highest prayer. I see it. I see it. I see it. Give you all my words. Come on, somebody. Lift your hands. Heaven, for I got you. Two more minutes. Oh, I give you all my Come on, somebody worship. sing that to the Lord. I give you all my worship. I give you all my worship. For you alone, our God. God's supernaturally helping you. It's a season of divine assistance. There's divine assistance for your life that's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You desperately need it right now. It's a tough place. God says, I'm going to come and I'm going to help you supernaturally. I see provision coming for things you need. Financial provision over the next seven weeks. It's going to come to you like uh, over the next seven weeks, seven weeks, seven weeks. I hear it. Over the next seven weeks, it'll come to you like the raven. Raven brought uh, The raven brought supernatural provision to the prophet in the wilderness in the Old Testament. God's going to bring supernatural provision to you for the next seven weeks. God's going to help you and God's going to bless you and God's going to lift you supernaturally. So I loose the power of God. Also, I see God touching your body. God's touching your body and God's going to work a great work in you. I'm telling you what, the hand of God will be upon you. And uh, there's also several word curses spoken over you that God is breaking off of you right now. There's lies from the pit of hell about your future and about what's coming out of you. And that's a lie. You don't have to believe it. Don't receive it. I'm telling you what, today, all of that is canceled. I break every curse. And as a man of God, I come here and I release the blessing of God into your life. And I say you're blessed and you'll be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Now there's help, there's help, there's help from heaven. I bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. I loose the power of God in this Jesus, mighty, 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 mighty name. Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands. Let's worship you for one more moment. I give you all my worship. I give you all There's a gentleman in a blue shirt with a beard right here on the back. 
Yeah. Yeah. You guys are looking for God to help you. Come here. Can I pray for y'all? Y'all come right here. Y'all stretch your hands towards this couple. The power of God's starting to come on y'all now. It's already here. Here it is. God's helping you. God's helping you physically. God's touching your body as well. There's the help of heaven coming to you. You guys went through a season of real supernatural attack. There was an attack that came after you that, that tried to take you out, but God wouldn't permit it. Um, there, there was also a real supernatural weariness that was on you. Like you're just, you were tired. It's like I'm tired. It's not that you wanted to quit or give up. It's just like the things of the world. Um, sometimes that weight starts to grow on us. There was like a real weariness that came upon you. Hey, you're doing good, bud. Keep laying your hands on her right there. And so God's, God's coming now. There's a supernatural strength that's being released into your body and into your physical body. And there's a real blessing coming as well into your life right now, into this season. I'm telling you what, that there's joy and there's laughter that, that's returning into y'all's lives at a higher level than ever before. I hear laughter and I hear help from heaven and I see supernatural multiplication. Now God's going to provide and open up, uh, I don't want to call it a job, but it's a new source of blessing for you as well. Like there's there's an addition, there's, there's other streams coming into your life. Now I see you right now and I, I see um, almost like God using you as a key man. I see guys in trucks being touched by the power of God. I see their lives being changed. And I see God moving supernaturally. Now I really see like like there's like there's like another uh, it's almost like an Isaac, like a promise coming to pass very quickly for you, right? Like 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 that's gonna happen. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. It's your day, and for you as well, sir. I see God will give you. Um, I see some help with like real estate and and, and like properties in the future too for you God will put that in your hand just like Abraham had a land God gave him God's got a land he's going to give to you guys the place that you'll be established it'll be multiplication it'll be health I bless you guys in Jesus in Jesus mighty name in Jesus in Jesus mighty 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 name come on Y'all give them, give God the highest. Praise. I'll stay here for a little while until I look like the one I be. Come on, lift your hands to heaven for one more second. And I will worship Him just for one more minute. One more minute. to you. I pray for a flat, fresh revelation of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. 
And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Come on, Christ is going to show up in our life in supernatural ways. Give somebody a high five on your way out of here. We love you.